Welcome everyone. I'm going to get my screen sharing here so that we can get going with our fabulous webinar for the day. Welcome everyone. My name is Trisha Berry. I am the Executive Director for Women in STEM at the University of Texas at Austin. One of your hosts for today as we celebrate March 1st, Texas Girls in STEM Day. This day is a day to encourage and celebrate the participation of girls all across Texas in science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, this event, this day, this celebration is a result of the House Bill 3435 that was passed by Representative Retta Bowers uh, in the last legislative session in, a couple of years ago. And so we're excited that we should be having Rep Bowers joining us at some point today. So stay tuned as she joins in on our panel. We have three fabulous panelists that are, are joining us today that are students. They're going to share, share their experiences with us and what inspires and excites them about the STEM fields that they are in and the STEM experiences that they are a part of. And then we also have Laura Rowe here from Texas Partnership for Out of School Time who is joining us as well. So speaking of partners, let me tell you a little bit about our partners for today. We are partnering with TextPost for our Texas Girls in STEM Day celebrations, as well as the Texas Girls Collaborative Project. And all of this is part of the Million Girls Moonshot Movement, uh, where we are really working hard to get more girls inspired about STEM futures, STEM careers and STEM possibilities. This is also a featured event of the Texas Science Festival. So lots of things happening. The Texas Science Festival is sponsored by the College of Natural Sciences at UT Austin, and we're a proud partner of the festival. And you can learn a ton more about uh, upcoming events with the festival on their website. And I'll share the link to that a little bit later in this webinar. I also wanted to make note of the Fab Fems Role Model Database. This is a fabulous resource of fabulous STEM role models where you can find all kinds of people doing amazing things in STEM. You can search in this database around zip code and areas of interest, fields of work, all kinds of different factors that might be of interest to you to explore, to read about, to connect with STEM role models so you can learn a little bit more about who's doing what in these spaces and maybe find your own passion. The Fab Thumbs directory is managed by the National Girls Collaborative Project, one of our other partners. And then last but not least, you can find this webinar and all of our webinars from today, as well as other career chats with STEM role models on our YouTube channel at UT we STEM. So please make note of that. We'll get this webinar posted up there just as soon as we can after we are done today. So with that, I'm going to stop my share and we're going to get going here um, with our questions and with our fabulous panelists so we can make sure that we get uh, lots of information out to all of our participants. I will also share that we have the Q&A uh, option here in the Zoom webinar ready to go. So as we're going along, if you have questions for any of our panelists, please throw them in that Q&A section and we'll make sure that we get to those uh, as we go throughout the day. Robin Lindsay, who is our pre-college program coordinator for women in STEM is here to help us manage the Q&A as well. So with that, let's get to it. So we have um, we have three amazing panelists with us right now, and we will have another one joining us hopefully soon. We have two panelists representing the Million Girls Moonshot Flight Crew, and the flight crew is amplifying youth voices in this national conversation around STEM equity as we really work towards a future where every girl can imagine themselves as a future engineer, a builder, inventor. And our two panelists are Autumn, she's an eighth grader from Houston, Texas, and Daniela, who is a 12th grader from El Paso, Texas. So thank you, Autumn and Daniela, for joining us today. And we also have Chloe Moore, who's a third year undergraduate student studying biology at the University of Texas at Austin. Chloe serves as a UT Austin Women in STEM Outreach Ambassador, and she is helping to inspire pre-college students and STEM majors. And finally, we are thrilled and honored to have Representative Bretta Bowers here with us today. 
She is representing Texas House District 113 and is joining us um, today to tell the story about Texas girls in STEM. She's the, the person behind the House bill, which declares March 1st every year is Texas Girls in STEM Day that is highlighting women in STEM, encouraging and exposing young girls, along with all of our school districts and organizations to embrace and enter those fields of STEM. So thank you again to all of you for joining us for this celebration. And I'm gonna get started with you, Rep Bowers, if you are ready. What inspired you to author this bill and advocate for women and girls in STEM across the state of Texas? Wow. Well, I just want to say, you know, what I want to say thank you, just like Trisha said, thank you so very much for joining us today and celebrating Texas Girls in STEM Day. Um, <clears throat> we did do a recognition on the floor today, but um, I, I want to say what inspired me is that I realized that as women in STEM, we are still hidden figures and that people will, you can be a doctor or anything. And they're like, I would look at a woman and say, well, I'd like to see a doctor if there's someone here and you may very well be that engineer or doctor or person in the tech field. Um, and part of that too, and part of my story is, I aspired to be a woman in STEM. I was a biology pre-med major for three solid years, and I got cut out in the weed out process. Um, my daughter, who is now a graduating health science major at Spelman College, has been accepted into the medical school at many great schools. I, and Trisha, I think this is news to you because we haven't talked since last year, um, but she was also my part of my inspiration. Um, she's now been accepted at Harvard and Meharry and Vanderbilt and Columbia and Emory and U, UNT. Um, and I think that's all of them. And just, she has just such great options, right? And um, when she told me that, and, and Meharry, if I didn't say that, it's my dad's alma mater, but when she told me that she got accepted to Harvard in particular, I almost stopped driving in the middle of the road in the street and was crying because it's almost like she is living my dream. And I used her in the layout um, because so many times, you know, we think that math is too hard and the sciences are too hard, especially when you get to chemistry, my God. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the other thing about the bill is that, you know, it exposes girls to so many great things like coding and, you know, just that you that you can do science is everywhere right and um that they by ex exploring this stem area but also aspiring to work in these fields you can close the gender pay gap you know you can have the opportunity to make so much more than what you could in other fields and you should strive for it you know but but lastly the bill really does make men and, you know, our boys in school respect women in leadership roles in higher places. And I had one of my colleagues today on the floor when I asked him to go up to celebrate Texas Girls in STEM Day with us. He told me, what? You're talking about STEM? I'm an engineer and my wife is an engineer and so is my daughter. And I thought, well, you have women in STEM. Oh my God. And so it, it just has been, a, you know, a really great experience. I cannot believe, can you, Trisha, that we're on the fourth Texas Girls in STEM Day? And these um, ladies came to visit us today, y'all. And I will admit, I gave them the calendar and I made them open it to March 1st, Texas Girls in STEM Day on the calendar. And I was like, every year now when I get the calendar, because it is on the state calendar and a holiday for us to celebrate. I go straight to March 1st. And so I signed the calendar for them. But <clears throat> it's just a great day. Um, and especially when we look at our nurses and our healthcare workers, you know, we had some doctors in the office today. 
and one of them was a um, resident. Uh, and I said, well, you are our Texas, you are a woman in STEM. And she said, you're my hero. And I said, no, you're mine. So just thank you for the question. That's awesome. And it's, it's so great to know that we have so many people that are learning more about these opportunities in STEM because of the day. And the, the celebration gives us that point in time to really shine some light on amazing things that are happening in STEM and amazing STEM role models, which we know are so critical to getting more girls in STEM. So thank you for that. We have Autumn here, who, uh, as I mentioned, is an eighth grader. So she's early in her STEM adventure. And so Autumn, can we hear from you a little bit about your STEM experiences and adventures? What are you involved in and what excites you about STEM? My STEM adventure is that we're learning how to code and that I had joined this thing called Project Invent where we're building a, a wristband for, for you when you're like, whenever you're you're like in real life heat and you don't know if you're gonna have a heat stroke. So we're building that. So we could just warn you if, if you're gonna have a heat stroke or not that you need to sit down. But yeah, we're learning how to code. We're also doing fashion in STEM. Uh, we were learning how to do some engineering and we also took some tours around STEM school, like, like schools related to STEM. I love that. And I love your invention because given that we're in Texas celebrating in Texas girls in STEM day, avoiding heat stroke is a real thing for all of us in Texas. So we need that invention, Autumn. I love that. And I love that you're exploring things and trying out engineering and, and doing things with your school as well to help you learn more about what some of those options are. Thank you for sharing. Daniela, what about you? You're a 12th grader, so you've had a little bit more experiences in STEM along the way. What are you involved in? And you have high school graduation looming. What's up next for you? So my STEM experience started with robotics and I joined robotics when I was in fifth grade. So I've been in robotics now for what, seven, eight years. And it has helped me a lot, learn more about coding, building robots and stuff. And it also has opened many other doors for me. Uh, last year, I was part of the NASA CIS internship, which it was big in STEM. I gained, I was certified with 500 hours of research for NASA. And it was a really good experience because hopefully my goal is to work for NASA one day. And as in for graduation, um, I'm in the process, I'm a finalist for the Terra Scholarship for UT Arlington, which is one of the best engineering schools in Texas. And hopefully I go there to study um, aerospace engineering. That's amazing. Well, let's hope that that all works out for you and we get you there to one of our UT uh, uh, system schools. We definitely uh, know that we've got great engineering programs across all of Texas. So that's fantastic, Daniela. You'll have to keep us posted about that as you go along. Well, I'm gonna turn it now over to Chloe who is currently studying biology. So what got you excited about biology and Maybe tell us a little bit about some of the research or projects or things that you've done so we can understand a little bit more what it's like to be a biology major. What does that really mean? Hi, yeah, so um, I became interested in biology because I like how the body works. Like right now I'm taking physiology and cell bio. Um, and last semester I took biochem because I am a pre-med. So I was like, okay, I gotta do like all the bio and it's really interesting. Next semester is anatomy, so that's really interesting. Um, and like due to this interest, how I like build on it is I became an EMT a couple of years ago. So it's actually really helpful when they're like, okay, you know, I'm going through this, this is what I need and how much oxygen do they get? It all like works together. So um, being an EMT helps and it also helps because I shadow a lot. So when they're talking in their doctor lingo, I, you know, 90% of it, I really don't know, but the 10% is a lot of bio. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I can kind of, when you're talking about this, I understand that. And yeah, so it's really helpful to be a bio major and understand biology when it comes to EMT and shadowing. That's great. I'm hearing more and more of our, our college students who have that EMT background, which I think is such an interesting way to get some of that practical experience to match that up with what you're studying so that it makes a little bit more sense. I love that. Thank you. 
Well, let me come back to you, Rep Bowers. So why is this important to the state of Texas? Why do we need to have more students in STEM? Why do we want more women and girls in STEM and heading into these STEM careers? Well, part of it is what I talked about when I mentioned the gender pay gap, you know, really equalizing that and making sure um, that, hey, our male counterparts know that we can and do deserve a seat at the table, a, a seat in the lab, you know, to really do the research. And um, I, I just have to go back to the movie Hidden Figures, you know, when I saw that, and I mentioned it on the House floor today when I was talking to my some of my male colleagues, that there are not enough women that are given enough credit in STEM that for all that we're doing. And, you know, when you look at Hidden Figures, they helped, you know, was that John Glenn get to the moon. So come on. I mean, you know, we have to be... Um, truly given the credit that we deserve. And, you know, the, the interesting thing, uh, Trisha, since you and I have been on this trek for a little while now, uh, hard to believe we're at year four celebrating Texas Girls in STEM Day, but my one of my new colleagues was my legislative director when we created the bill. And so I was like, Representative Plisa, get come with me to that is your bill. Like I'm like, it is ours together. And you know, some of my colleagues really said that, gosh, you know, Retta, that bill is what's so beautiful about Texas Girls and STEM Day is that it is authentic legislation just from looking at college students and girls like you, high school students and eighth graders, just looking at you as, as women in STEM. And the fact that, you know, I think Daniela, you said you're doing robotics and you were doing coding. I think Autumn talked about coding uh, as well already. So you are women in STEM already. You're walking in that, um, not waiting until you're older and in your career and profession and getting paid all the big bucks for what you do. But, um, and and given that credit for, you know, saving society from things like COVID and viruses that we're, you know, we're all shut in not too long ago. Um, trying to um, be safe from. So I just, you know, today was was really great. I, I actually wore this green to commemorate Texas Girls in STEM Day, but partly for other reasons. I met with some seventh graders from my actual junior high, my school, my school where I went to elementary and junior high. And that green and white was actually our school color, um, were our school colors, so that's part of it. But, um, you know, certainly green with us partnering with you at UT, but also at, with Girl Scouts. That green has been our color uh, for quite some time, and we've woven it in um, year after year. Uh, do y'all know what we're doing this year for Texas Girls in STEM Day? Tell us. Oh, well, thank you for asking. But no, Texas Girls in STEM Day, y'all, we're actually having, um, participating and partnering with an, a lady that has a, a product that she's put out there called Black to the Lab. So they're going back to the lab and young girls are creating and making lip gloss so they will be mixing all the so like this is back to the hands-on Texas Girls in STEM Day. Trisha do you remember our first year when we were at the Girl Scout STEM Center for Excellence and then we had to go virtual to to Texas Girls in STEM Days so um I'm glad that that this conversation gives us a taste of back in the virtual virtual times of what Texas Girls in STEM Day looked like, but we're actually going back to the lab. We are really going to have girls in the lab spend a Saturday. I think y'all, some of y'all are going to come out and join us. Um, so I don't know if you're coming from Austin, but the, the staff tells me that some, some of our advisory council are going to be with us that day. So I kind of get real giddy. Trisha knows I, you know, 
I want y'all to know, Texas Girls in STEM Day, I made sure that my voice in the chamber was crystal clear on the mic today. Like, I didn't want them there to be any question about what we're stopping the process for. This is too important. And I, I will say that um, I could tell that my colleagues were listening and sharing in this special day with all of us. So. Thank you. And I think what you're talking about with this hands-on experience is, is so important. And we heard that from all of our, our panelists, Chloe, Daniela, and Autumn all shared those hands-on experiences that are making a difference and helping to excite them. And that Texas Girls in STEM Day is more than just March 1st. It's more than just the one day. It really is about celebrating those things. And you'll be thrilled to know we just had our STEM Girl Day at UT Austin this past Saturday, and we had uh, almost 10,000 K through eighth graders that, that wow. came to campus to play and to experience STEM and to do those hands-on activities. So we know that's critically important and can't wait to see what happens in uh, the celebration that you have coming up as well. Yes. So we're going to flip to, to role models for a minute, but I, I wanted to ask you before I move to our other panelists, because I know we have short time with you today, Representative Bowers. Can you tell us about your STEM role models? I, I'm assuming your daughter is one of those STEM role models in one way, but maybe other STEM role models that you've had along your pathway or those that are inspiring you to create this kind of day. You know, I, I, like like I said, going back to Katherine Jackson and some of those people back uh, that really those women that made sure uh, that the astronauts got to uh, the moon for the first uh, trip. And I, I think back to people like Mae Jemison, you know, I, I, an actual astronaut. Um, but I think mostly I have to be honest with you, it's from my own experience. You know, you look at people like, you know, we may not consider this a woman in STEM, but if you look at people like, I, I, I want to think it's Fannie Lou Hamer or those women that dealt with, with Black women and their hair, because I y'all know, I don't know if you know, but I do carry the Crown Act as well. So, you know, you think about, uh, the women back years ago that, you know, were putting chemical on women's hair to straighten it um, so that, that Black women and uh, women uh, with curly hair, uh, that, that they were presentable in our society um, to a certain standard. So I, I don't know, you know, for me, there's so many what when you think I guess for me I guess as a young student you know Madame Curie I mean like you can go way back and think about all the first time you know women that made changes in in the sciences but I have to say that you know my dad was a, a medical doctor for many years and in almost 40 years in Houston Texas and I certainly thought I was going to be working at that um, at that medical clinic, our family clinic. Um, but my daughter is probably right now the biggest inspiration because I want to say this. She really thought she was going to medical school and that was going to be it. But then COVID happened and she said to me one day, she said, uh, well, the funny thing is with her getting into all these great medical schools, she said like about a year ago, I might not be ready for med school. She says to me, I, I might not be ready at the kitchen table. So I said, okay, you know, if that's how you feel. And she said, but I think I want to go into public health because I may impact more and I could touch the masses and so many more than just one-on-one -on -one patient care, right? And I thought, you know, who are you? What child thinks in those ways? And especially when you think of fields like epidemiology, that she could think, I want to have greater impact. Um, so she's, she's such a great inspiration, and I don't know what I will do the day she gets her master's in public health. And um, 
You yeah. might write another house bill and designate another day. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, you know, I mean, that might happen. That actually might happen. Um, you know, so I'm just excited. And and it's the funniest thing. I think I'm a better public servant than I ever would have been and policymaker, lawmaker than I ever would have been a doctor. I just do. Even though in my house, I'm known as Dr. Mom. So like, you better know, I had all my books and if they got sick, I would go into the to the doctor with them and had fully diagnosed whatever ailment they had. And I said, you know, the poor doctors that we had over the years, I'd go in and say, well, you tell me, because I'm not the professional, but this is what I've discovered. And they, you know, these are the symptoms. So. But, and we all have a little bit of STEM in us, which I think is what you're yeah. speaking to, right? Is to not yeah. be afraid to figure those things out and problem solve and apply that that science and math and technology wherever we can. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Representative Bowers. I know you uh, have many things on your agenda today, so we appreciate you giving us some time and celebrating with us this wonderful day of Texas Girls in STEM Day. So thank you. Thank you. Well, yes. And, and Dr. Barry, please let me get on your calendar whenever, whenever I can. You know, we are, we are too close to each other at this point to, for me not to like cross the street or you come across the street to, to, you know, see each other. And I will tell Andre and, and the staff to make sure we have a face to face. Perfect. Thank you all so it. much. And I, um, Look forward to all the great things that you're going to be doing in STEM and um, look forward to keeping in touch and hearing more about what you go on to do. Thank you for awesome. celebrating with us. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Bye. All right, let's keep the conversation going about STEM role models. Um, so I want to hear from Autumn and Daniela and Chloe. Can you share with us about your STEM role models? Maybe a STEM role model that's inspired you or influenced you in your journey thus far. Chloe, do you want to start? Yeah, so like when I'm shadowing, um, it's so interesting because a lot of these fields are male dominated. So it's always really cool to see like women there and um just like that women presence. So that's really inspiring. Also, a couple of years ago, I think when I took um, bio, it was, we were talking about CRISPR and um, the scientist who did that, I think, okay, I might mispronounce some names, but I think it was Jennifer Donda and um, Emanuela Charpentier. She, um, they both did that and they got a Nobel Prize for it. So that was like really inspiring to me. And I'm like, okay, I can keep going. I'm not in chemistry, but it's still really cool. All right, Daniela, what about you? One of my role models would actually be my aunt. We're really close and she's actually a radio frequency engineer. So she has really pushed me through go to that STEM pathway. And she would tell me how like in college, like she would be like one out of 10 men in her classes and stuff. And she has really pushed me to be in STEM. That's awesome. Family members can make a big difference. That's for sure. All right, Autumn, what about you? My STEM role model is my, uh, my, like my STEM teacher in my STEM club because not only has she won a lot of competitions, but she's also joined this group called NSB that I'm also in. So like, it, it just gives me that women can do anything without a man's help. That's awesome. Yes. And, and so very true. I think we heard that from Representative Powers as well, that really part of Texas Girls in STEM Day is to, to show off that women can be in all of these different STEM majors and can do all of these different STEM things. And we can really choose our own pathway and make it be what we want it to be. So thank you all for sharing that. We have the Q&A area open. So if you have questions for our fabulous panelists, this is the time to throw in a question. Um, I don't see any open questions in there right now. 
Uh, so I can always throw in my questions or if Laura, you have a question or Robin, you have a question, I can defer to you all as well if you want to know something in particular. We'll pause for a moment. Okay, I have a question then. So we are talking a lot about the, the celebrations and the, the inspirations for Texas Girls and STEM Day. So what I would like to hear from each of you is what has been your maybe most exciting STEM experience thus far? What is something maybe that you've done that's gotten you super excited about the future possibilities in STEM or got you really excited about the work that you were doing? Any of y'all can join in if you've got a, a response to that. Um, something that really excited me to join more, even more STEM, it was being accepted to that NASA SIS internship. I've always since little been wanting to work for NASA and that's like my dream. So it was really awesome that I had that opportunity and like to me, like scientists, actual astronauts from Apollo 13. And yeah, it was really awesome. I love that. And I, I feel like that was an experience that seemed to help kind of confirm that, yes, this is where my interest is. And I am on a pathway that is heading towards what I want. So that's that's great. Thank you. Chloe or Autumn? I think um, just like being out there as an EMT, like when I go to different events, that has just been really like inspiring to me. I just really like to do that. Um, it's motivated me too. Uh, I just like to help people and like, yeah, just the whole process is just fun to me. Yeah. That's awesome. That people interaction kind of reinforces that for you as well. The why, oh, this is why I'm doing this and why I'm studying this. That's great. What about you, Autumn? You shared all kinds of things that you've been involved in. What's maybe the most exciting thing thus far? Uh, after joining uh, the project event and building this uh, thing for your health, it made me want to realize that I would like to do more engineering and more building and coding and STEM. That's awesome. And again, those experiences kind of help you figure out, oh, I really do like this. I want to do more of that. And is a is maybe the, the great takeaway for anyone that might be watching this is to go get those experiences so that you can learn what you do like or maybe what you don't like. So thank you. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Robin. I see some questions coming in and we have a few minutes for some questions. Okay, yes, we have several questions in the chat. So the first question is, what can we do to empower more girls and women in our communities and schools? Actually for my school or my city, um, there's this motivational, local motivational speaker in my city, and we got, me and my colleague got recruited to collaborate to make a conference, and it's actually called Young Women's Empowerment Conference, and we're going to invite around 500 female students from our school district, and we're going to be talking about STEM and other opportunities that women should have. Yeah, I think like more representation, just like showing more women who are in STEM instead of like, you know, like you think about STEM or some people might think about STEM and think like Einstein, people look like Einstein or like men or anything, something like that. Just more like women representation would, I think would inspire more people. Okay, those are some great responses. Autumn, do you have anything to add? Uh, I was going to say that in, even if you have problems and you still want to join STEM, not like not everybody has an, a degree in STEM if you think you need one. So if, if you're like a woman or any type of person and you think you can't join STEM because of that, you still can. Okay, so the next question is, what do you believe is needed for the future and promise of women in science? What is missing and can be done to change? Mm 
maybe like putting more like at like local activities or like conferences and stuff out there. I think so too, like just more opportunities, um, like for women to have the spot. Cause you can't like, so you can't like take a spot that's not there, right? So just having an opportunity to even get into the door. Um, I think that would help a lot with like women in science in the future. Um, yeah, just more opportunities and seats at the table. Okay, and I think we have time for one more question. Um, so the last question is going to be, what advice would you give to girls who might not think they're smart enough to pursue STEM? Um, I would say completely change your mindset. There, I just, there's no such thing as like not smart enough or something like that. Like try to have like a growth mindset. I think everybody, there's a role for everyone, even if you might not get accepted into something because they have some different criteria. There's a role for everyone in STEM, um, every woman, every man, everyone who doesn't identify as either or. But um, I would say just, yeah, go for it. Um, but yeah, there's no such thing as not smart enough. You're smart enough than anything you do, in my opinion. I think you should just try it. Like, no matter what, you won't lose anything just by trying it. And maybe it will be like what you're meant to be doing. So just give it a shot. Autumn, anything to add on this before we close things up? Uh, I'll just say that uh, nobody's not, that everybody's smart in their own way, no matter what. So you can basically find your own position in STEM. If like, if one thing doesn't work, just go to the other. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, what fabulous, closing advice. I was going to ask a closing question, but I think we just got it because you all shared some great insights and inspirations there for students that are following behind you. Try things. Um, don't fall into those stereotypes of I'm not smart enough or I don't belong here because you absolutely do. And we need you in STEM spaces. And I love what Autumn, you just said, if, if one thing doesn't work, or maybe if you don't like it over here, go try something else in STEM. There's so many different pathways and different experiences and different majors and career paths that you can follow. There's definitely one out there for every single woman, woman and girl in uh, STEM to, to make their pathway and, and make our world a better place. So thank you all very much for joining us. I'm going to throw in the chat our Texas Girls in STEM Day website so you can find the other webinars that, that we had done earlier today. We'll get all of the videos posted there, also on our YouTube channel. And if you want to explore some more webinars or experiences in STEM coming up in the next few days with our Texas Science Festival, the link for that is there as well. The Million Girls Moonshot is something that we will be amplifying and sharing throughout the state as best we can between text post, Laura is there, wave again, um, as well as all of our women in STEM efforts. And hopefully we will see more of our fabulous Million Girls Moonshot flight crew from Texas, Daniela and Autumn on future things with us. And Chloe, Chloe is representing our women in STEM outreach ambassadors and our fabulous leadership team that we have with women in STEM at UT Austin. So hopefully we will have her out to join us in future things as well. Thank you, Robin, for facilitating the Q&A so fabulously. Thank you all for joining in this evening and celebrating Texas Girls in STEM Day with us. And as you heard Representative Bauer say, there's more to come with Texas Girls in STEM Day. Let's not make it just one day. Let's celebrate Texas Girls in STEM and women in STEM every single day. So with that, Thank you all. Have a fabulous rest of your evening and happy Women's History Month. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.